So why would you want to use an interactive whiteboard? Well, lots of reasons. Just press space bar a few times. Sorry, I've got my helper here. Um, so they're exciting and new and you've probably got one in your classroom by now and you want to be able to use it not just as a whiteboard you know, the ones that you draw on with a pen, but you want to use it for the features that it has. Um, and so you need to learn how to really use it well. And that's um, hopefully what we're going to give you some ideas for today. So some of the issues are that um, the whiteboard really isn't anything in itself. It's only as good as how you use it and the software that you've got and the interactive websites that you can find to use it with. Um, also, you need to develop your lesson plan around it because it's not just the same as you standing at the front and talking um, or even sometimes getting kids to come up and write on the board, but you need to be able to find the software and work out how that's going to work with your group. Um, some of the other issues are that, you know, your class like a normal class, I don't know, might be 30 students and really can only have two or three up at the whiteboard at one time. So it's not like they've got their own device and they can all use it. It's a different thing than that. And the other thing is that the graphics that they're used to on their phones and the interactivity and all the beeping, flashing, winning gems and all that sort of stuff um, doesn't really happen on a whiteboard. So it's not as awesome as, you know, some of the stuff that they've got on their handheld devices. Okay, so play and um, so this one, fibre um, helps our food go through our body and which three of these foods are a good source of fibre? So what do we think? We have chocolate, broccoli, brown rice, brown rice you say? And we put it in his head and he eats it and he's happy because he's green. So when it goes green he's very happy. And you can get hints and um, high fibre food, the plant food and so on. So you can um, interact and you can have different kids coming up to answer. You could have them in teams um, and so on. Let's carry on with our PowerPoint. Right, okay. Another thing that we do is um, labelling. So you can have your um, diagrams. This is a picture of the heart. and. But how to engage everyone? Like I said, only a couple of people can be up here at one time. So you might have your whole class stand in a big circle and the whole circle rotates around. So one by one, they come up and they have to write something on. Oh, hang on a second, pen. Right, so I might write Vena Cava. For those of you who don't know, that's what that tube that goes into the heart is. So um, you might get them to write in and um, you could have the whole class moving around until all of the words are filled up. You might say um, you've only got, you know, five seconds at the board or maybe ten seconds and the whole class could be counting down and they have to quickly write and move on. You could have it competitive where um, somebody has to, uh, once you've written it, you can go and sit down um, and so you have to stay up running around the class until you've done your contribution. Or you could have it the other way. If somebody gets it wrong, then they go and sit out and the winners are at the front of the class. So you can, you know, different ways to make people more competitive about it. Um, and the other thing is that when once the class people go and sit down, they could still be shouting out or helping with spelling. I mean, because this is medical terms and there can be spelling issues. So, um, you know, they might be helping with that. So they're still engaged, even though they've gone and sat down. So that's another good way to keep everyone in. And another way... Um, is that you might say this, we have to label the parts in order of the blood flow. And so then, and you could even have a panel of judges. So you could have, you know, three or four of your class members being the judges with the answers in front of them. And the person comes up and they write this one. And then the next answer, what if they put it in, labelled this one, but the blood actually goes into here, then they would go, no, no, you're out, <laughs> back to the start of the line or, you know, whatever to make it fun. Um, and it really does depend on your students very much. And uh, so just have to see what works with your people. 
Okay, um, another one that we do is where we have the whiteboard as one station and around the class you would have other stations. So you would have models or drawing or whatever else happening around. So you've only got three or five kids at the, or people at the front of the class at one time and then they can work as a group and even if you were doing like a poster kind of thing it, there would be one main scribe anyway so they can do that and because it's sort of click and drag stuff they can you know they're more eager to do it rather than with spelling you can make spelling errors and you know stuff like that but with click and drag it's less errors if you know what I mean so um, this one is a rap song which um, then using that understanding, which I, I won't play because it's about five minutes long, but there's heaps of good stuff on there, so the link is there for you. Um, and then, oh, can we go to that one? <laughs> and so then there's, um, with this rap song, so I play the rap song to the class, which is about digestion and it has lots of words in it, and the lyrics they can print out as well. And, but then there's interactive stuff and there's crosswords um, and there's um, like diagrammatic things and um, okay so this is the guy he does lots of science, science music videos it covers a huge amount of high school science if you teach anything like it they cover lots of stuff so um, can I scroll up whoa not that far up what have I done Right. Okay. So here, for example, is a crossword. And you can do this. So if you had a group of, say, five, um, they might pick one and then they get um, a question. And so what connects the mouth to the stomach? And I, oh, just press solve instead of actually answering it. Let me try again. Okay. <laughs> um, how do I type? Oh, it's clicked in, but I haven't got a... I have no keyboard. Um, <laughs> Let's pretend you had one. And, uh... Okay, so I would have a keyboard and I could type in. Um, let's try a different activity that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't ask for that. So um, let me go to here. Okay, so. All right, so this is a click and drag one. So you're familiar with click and drag one. So this is the digestive system, which we've just listened to that fabulous rap song about, imagine. And now we're going to go, oh, appendix, I remember he said. Oh. And it's probably crawled. <laughs> appendix, which might be here. And it says, great, because I got it right. And if you get it wrong, it will say, no, please try again and so on. And so the, the, it's sort of self-answering and so the kids can work together um, and, and have it, you know, any kind of errors sorted out without you having to be there and without them feeling bad because it's just a small group of them at the front of the class and the answers show to them. And also this link is in their blackboard and they can do it from home as well later. So it's a good revision tool as well. Um, so another thing that we do is involving two groups where you would have one at the whiteboard and one in the class and you would have, so I've got a diagram of an ear here and you might have one of them saying the function of the ear uh, or a different part of the ear. So they might be saying, well, this is the pinna and this collects the sound waves and it's the outside part. Um, and then the team here would be clicking and dragging the label to it. So you could have done that with the digestive system. Or you could have it a bit more tricky where you have the group saying they don't tell you which part it is, they just tell you the function. And then the team up here has to guess, oh, where does, you know, what changes the sound waves from sound waves to mechanical vibrations? Oh, it could be this one and they'll label it. And you could even have a third group of judges saying yes, that's correct or no, it isn't. So it, to involve more people, depending how many people you got in your class. All right. Uh, now, this one I've done, this is um, another click and drag thing. And the reason why I want to show you this one is yeah, <laughs> because um, 
sometimes, like your whiteboard might have something, like ours has easy interactive tools, which is a, a software that works with our whiteboard, whiteboard, but you might have a different type of whiteboard and a different type of software that goes with it. But what I've done here is I've used PowerPoint so that it works with anything. Um, and you probably already have PowerPoint. So, and, but you can't do it in the slideshow mode. You have to go out into this mode, if you can see that. Um, and then you can move the things around. So this one is, um, you've got, this is medical terminology and you've got the head, the body and the tail or the prefix, the root word and the suffix. And you would, could get teams to come up and make words. So we might have um, teams of three and the first person would say, I'm choosing the head, which is osteo and that means bone. And the middle person would choose Paw, which means a hole, and the tail person chooses, oopsie, <laughs> and the tail person can't move the box. Oh no! <laughs> all right, we've got it. Okay, and you can see all the kinds of silly stuff that happens. Um, <laughs> So the tail person says this means condition of. So it's the condition of having holes in your bones. And then that team would go yay and go and sit down and the next team comes up with their three. Um, so that's just an example and you can use it in PowerPoint. And the other thing I want to show with this is I've done this using, oh, can I go here? Insert shape and just any kind of shape you like and then you right click on there and it goes edit text and you can add the text in. And the reason why I do it like that is because then the text is attached to the shape and because if you do this in some other tools, the text is separate and you drag the shape away and the text is still over there and it doesn't hold together. So doing this way, um, it stays together and then you get your fish. It doesn't really look like a fish, <laughs> but you get the idea. Okay. And speaking of fish, we can go back to, um, okay, so another, um, gosh, I'm talking a million miles an hour. <sighs> um, okay, so another fish one that you might have used is fishbone activity, which is structural intelligence technique. And you will have used this as a um, graphic organiser to make, you know, put the information in such a way that makes it easy to remember. Um, so this one, um, on our interactive whiteboard, we don't have a zoom function, but this one is very special and it does. So I'm going to show you um, something that works really well, <laughs> we hope. Oh, fish. Um, so this one has a zoom in, zoom out. And why I like it for this is because you, the kids can write easily. So I can, here's my fish that I cut and paste earlier. and I'm going to zoom, 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 and then I'll get my pencil. And what are we going to write about today? Should we talk about um, <laughs> blood vessels? This is one that we use for this. So I might write um, veins have oh, valves, say, for example. All right. And like my team would come up and we're just working on veins and what's about veins. And then another team would come up and they would have a different colour. Oh, I've done the wrong colours. <laughs> artery. Um, arteries, whatever, about arteries, stronger muscular walls, something else. So, um, but the fact that it zooms, because now when I go smaller, the writing is still very clear. Whereas if I try to write like that now, um, I, can't, I can't write very small because it, it just, you know, can't work. Even if you have the fabulous pen, it's still very hard to write tiny words and you can't read them. So that's why I really like this zoom in, zoom out thing. Um, but if yours doesn't have it, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can just work on it the size you can and you'll just have to limit the information that goes on there. But the other thing that I really like about this is that you can make a collaborative work from all the different teams in the class, can come up and add, and you can save it, and then you can put it um, on your online platform, and then everybody's got the poster. And when you do this in class, which you've probably done fishbone in class, 
there's one poster and either no one takes it home or only one person takes it home and then it goes in the bin at some point and it's just more waste. But this way, everybody has a copy. They can have it on their phone. They can use it for revision, you know, and it works really well. And I think it's a good way of sharing. And you can also really use it for assessment in this way as well, because you can rec record the students' work and you could have them write their names on their group's part. Or um, in the Easy Interactives tool we have, you can then do a new page for each student and then you've got individual work saved. So that can be good for keeping evidence digitally from what you do in the classroom rather than having, you know, all those posters that don't fit in any box or in the cupboard. Okay. Oh, Easy Interactive Tools is the one that um, works with our whiteboard that we have in our class and it's part of um, the keypad technology. Yeah. Some of the things, or these are just things that we've found don't work, um, but it depends very much on what whiteboard you have. Because our whiteboard is an actual white board uh, with a, a sensor, whereas this is kind of more like a TV, so it probably isn't an issue for this one. But because ours has a thing and a sensor, where um, if you're wearing something very shiny and blingy, or the students are, it disrupts the signal. So they might have to de-bling before they write. Um, the other thing I found is that it doesn't pick up very well, oops, sorry, and you mustn't touch the screen unwillingly <laughs> because it goes to the next slide. Um, so it doesn't pick up well in the very edge areas and it can get very scribbly or sometimes you get double writing because you're blocking the, the sensor signal twice. Um, and similarly, if you're wearing long flowy tops or you write with your arm on the board, who does that? But some kids will do that. Um, and then you get the whole, every point of contact makes a big line. So um, in, th in that case, offer something for the person to write with because it will just take them a step away and there'll be less mess on there. Um, and writing big and clear. So I know that, you know, because we've all written on whiteboards, we're used to doing that. But people who are used to being students and writing little letters, then they get up there and they write little letters and the people can't read it. So um, write big and clear. Um, and it can be messy, but, you know, that's okay. Okay, so some advantages of having a whiteboard instead of just, oh, sorry, an interactive whiteboard instead of just your normal whiteboard or blackboard, um, is that you can take, um, you can switch back and forward as you've seen us do today. We have switched back from different websites, all sorts of stuff back and forward into different stuff. And if I want to go back, then my notes that I've put there are still there. Um, and uh, so that's good. So you can take notes and then you can go back to your PowerPoint and then you can come back and you don't have to wipe off the screen to show the next slide. Um, also that you can add, so you can have your diagram or your basic outline in your PowerPoint and then you can draw on top of it to emphasise what you want to emphasise or, um, you know, to highlight points or add more detail. Um, oh, as I said before, you can save the students' work um, as evidence and also for sharing and for learning and for them to keep. Um, and you can post it online so they can all share it. And the best thing is that you just switch it off at the end. <laughs> you don't have to scrub it down. So that's good and it never gets dirty. Yay. <laughs> okay, so do you have any questions? How often are you using it with your learners? So, you know, oh. Every week? What, how often? Oh, every week? Yeah, we, um, well, because the way we structure our um, classes, we have a lecture and then we have a lab session. So in the lecture, obviously, they don't use it. But in the lab sessions, they do use it quite a lot for um, presenting and for just adding stuff on and or having it as one station in a class. We use that quite a lot. Just because there's, and because we teach high school science effectively, there's lots of stuff out there, you know. Yes. Oh, 
Here's another example. Yeah. Sorry, did you have any more? Did that answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, how long have you been using it, Jodie? I was just thinking, how long did it take for you to get used to it? Or? Um, gosh, how long? Not really that long. A year? How long have we had the whiteboard? Yeah, year. One year? Yeah. And yeah, just, it just takes, you do have to spend some time playing with it and I would highly recommend just going in when there's no class and no students to play around and see how it works and and also don't overwhelm yourself because when you probably all had the you know guy from keypad or the guy from whatever come out and tell you the 50 billion features that it's got and you're just trying to go oh how am I going to use that? Um, and a lot of them we don't use, to be honest. But I would just have a play and learn how to use one thing. And then, you know, the next week, learn how to use one more thing. And then as the weeks go by and you feel more comfortable and you know kind of where to click, um, then you'll just pick up more and more and then, and then go to one of those trainings. And then, that you, then you can really, you've got questions to ask. And often those... Um, if they're selling you the power or the product, they're happy to do more training sessions. So, you know, it works and you can ask more details and more how do I actually use that. So I've been using it for a year. Has there been visible changes to students' behaviour that you say it has on a whole made a positive impact on, on, on the way the delivery is being Ooh. done or well, I guess it's just, I still feel like it's kind of new and that we're discovering more things. I mean, in the first bit, it was really just about how to draw and get it to work and all that sort of stuff. And now we're finding more stuff that is online that works with it. So, I mean, and that is ongoing, you know, and then you find some really good things and then some that don't work and then... You know, and then there'll always be a day where you wanted to do something online and it just, there was no internet or something. Yeah. So um, it has become part of your repertoire, but you're not yeah. relying on it. Yeah. It's something that you must have to do your lessons. Yeah, that's right, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because with any technology, yeah. you can't rely on it 100%. You have to always have your backup paper <laughs> option. But, I mean, it is, it is pretty good. And, um, yeah, it has made a difference, to be honest, with... Um, less pack up time because you know if you're doing it on paper and pe textures the mess in the room is just enormous but um, if it's all on there it's just off and out the door <laughs> that's right so yeah that is a huge difference actually yeah, yeah. And when you're looking for um, interactive activities that you know you haven't created like the digestion one are yeah. you Googling, you know, interactive activities for whiteboards or, or oh, just interactive No, just activities. the content. Oh, okay. I, I just search yeah. for the content okay. stuff yeah. and, um, yeah, and also, like, lots, I've watched quite a lot of TED Talks and they refer to, oh, okay. you know, see my website. Right. And so you go to their website and then you find heaps of stuff. And then that will often link you on to other stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, when, you know, when you watch a YouTube thing, there's a whole lot of other YouTube things yeah, down the yeah. side and you can go, oh, that one looks a bit interesting. And then you, just following it like that. So it is um, time and, but, and trying to find uh, the content that's at your level for your students that, t you know, has the same sort of emphasis. But at the same time, because there's so much out there, you, you can, and students understand, you can go, well, I got this and this, you know, tells us more than we need to know for our course, but it's exciting and fun and it's got these bits. But, because um, there will always be something like in the labelling of the eye, are you doing that one? Yes. Um, in the labelling of the eye, some of the ones that come up are, we don't include, like, we don't ask our students to remember every single one of these um, features on the eye. So something will come up and I'll go, oh, well, um, don't worry about that one because that won't be in the test. But the ones that will be in the test <laughs> are these important ones and you just, if it's in the pathway of where the light goes, that's what we're going to focus on. So, you know, because there's always going to be more on there than what you want, probably, depending on your level. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is another one, and this was a downloadable one. So this is, we have on our USB, and this is, 
Is this from here? From yeah. Yeah. And there are different subjects you can search for uh, biology, chemistry, um, history, music. Yes. And so can you hear that? And you can search all these subjects if Luba hasn't got a microphone on. But yeah. um, so you can search subjects. So there's heaps, there is so much out there. And if you work at any of the colleges, I would go to the library yeah. and say, show me the content because the library people will know. And there's so much stuff out there, really. Yeah, I mean, lots of, of subjects are taught across the world, so there is a lot out there. So some of these things you can download and then you have with you and then it doesn't matter if the internet's not working because you've got it on your USB. That's another good point for that one. Um, and, you know, any of those, well, I would say Woodridge's, but they have gone under, but any of those teacher work sh uh, shops, they will have stuff as well for different topics that you want to teach. So... There's lots out there, you just have to find it. Authorised by the Government of Western Australia, Perth.